Hey everybody, this is Jason Nakers again with Green Acres Pest Control, uh, live tonight on the Bedbug Show, where we uh, discuss uh, bug problems that you may have, bedbug problems. Tonight we're going to talk about how to properly prepare your home for a bedbug treatment. So you found out that you have bedbugs and you got to get it treated. What do you need to do? to ensure that your house is going to be properly prepared so that an exterminator or you yourself can do an adequate treatment. Uh, I have seen exterminators turn away a bed bug job because it wasn't properly prepared, so that's what we're going to discuss tonight. Let's say you found bed bugs in your bed and the exterminator's coming over you know, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, whenever it is, and he's going to treat your house for uh, bed bugs. Um, <laughs> what do you need to do? Now, with my customers, I don't uh, require that my customers take things out of their dressers or their nightstands or uh, where a lot of people will, they'll come in and they will take their... Uh, you know their clothes out of their dresser they'll take all their pants and their and their clothing and everything out bag it up and put it in the middle of the room leave all, all the drawers and stuff hanging open uh that's usually a requirement for a lot of exterminators the reason that i don't require that my customers do these things is because i set my customers up on a 90-day schedule so that i come back once every 30 days and retreat that will ensure that the bed bugs uh, crawl out. They're gonna crawl out anyway because they're hungry and they'll come to the host who lays in the bed and they'll crawl over them and they'll get on them, they'll bite them and then they crawl through the chemical and so they die. Uh, so it's not very hard to get rid of them when you use your customer's bait. Yeah, I know that sounds bad, but really that's what's the most effective. That's what I've found to be the most effective way to get rid of bed bugs. And a lot of people will ask me, well, what about the bed bugs that are in the boxes or bed bugs that are in uh, my nightstand or my chest of drawers or what, what happens with those bugs? Um, they come out to bite you because they're hungry and because you're there. So, you know, like I said, if you go 90 days, and you treat once every 30 days, then you always have a residual that's there to kill the bed bugs when they come to bite you. They're gonna come out of the chest of drawers, they're gonna come out of the boxes, they're gonna come out of your luggage, they're gonna come out of the places that they're hiding, and they're gonna try to get on you and bite you. Um, when you come in and you do a treatment, and there's always a, a of uh, active pesticide there for them to crawl into, it eliminates them and it kills them. Uh, the reason that we're talking about this tonight, because I had a suggestion last week, actually after the show went off the air, uh, someone had wanted me to go over uh, how to properly prepare your home for bed bugs. For those of you that are just coming in now, uh, that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, and of course, any question you may have, mice, rats, roaches, anything, I don't care, you know, you can ask me any questions. But um, anyway, this is just a, uh, I wanted to go over this really quick for, for a lady who actually commented on one of my videos. But uh, so basically what I require for my customer to do is you go in, strip the bed so you have only a mattress and a box spring. If you have any bed bags, which a lot of people do when you go to do a bed bug job, <coughs> you'll have to excuse me, I'm still getting over a bit of a cough. Um, you're going to need to take the bed bags off your mattress, off your box spring, so that you can get to the actual box spring itself and the mattress itself. Um, because that's going to need to be treated. You're going to need to flip the mattress up and treat the bed frame. Uh, don't have a whole bunch of stuff under the bed. You want to clear that stuff out. That's about the only thing I usually tell people. You know, clear the stuff out from under the bed so that you can actually get to the bed frame. Uh, you know, the, the headboard, footboard, the, you know, pull the bed away from the wall. It needs to be pulled away from the wall six inches to a foot anyway. Because at night when you sleep on the bed, uh, the bed bugs... What ha a lot of times what happens now, if you have a bed skirt, they'll crawl up the skirt of the bed. A lot of times I will tell my customers, just leave the skirt off until after we eliminate the bed bugs. It just, it's just one less thing to risk them crawling up to get on you while you're in the bed. So just take that off and leave it off. Um, 
And when you sleep at night, you'll throw your covers off of you and the bed bugs will crawl up the covers from the floor. And so that's why I said you want to eliminate this, the, the gap. You want to increase the gap that the bed touches the wall. So you pull it away so that when you sleep, you don't throw your covers off and they touch the wall where the bed bugs can crawl up your covers because they're not treated. The covers don't have any pesticide on them whatsoever. And so that will... Uh, that'll help you a lot, uh, especially if you're trying to do it yourself. Um, there are instances where it's just not possible to pull the bed away from the wall and, you know, you can still get rid of bed bugs. It's not an end all, you know, you know, like, oh no, I'm going to have them forever. Don't, don't think that. You can still get rid of the bed bugs even in those situations. Just be mindful of where your sheets and your covers are going to touch. You don't really want them to touch the wall if you can avoid it. Um, <coughs> so, when you treat for bed bugs, you don't want to take things off of the floor and put them on your couch. You don't want to, you know, because you're going to have to flip the couches upside down. You have to flip your uh, Lazy Boy chairs upside down. You need to treat inside those things. So you want to be sure that you don't, um, you don't leave those things all cluttered. Um, a lot of times you'll go in where somebody has prepared for you to come in and treat for bed bugs and they'll take the stuff uh, like out from under the bed and put it on top of the bed. You know, that stuff still has to come off the bed because the bed has to be flipped. Uh, you'll have stuff in the living room. People will take stuff out of the living room to clear paths and stuff like that. They'll put the stuff on the couch or they'll take the stuff out from their bedroom and sit it on their couch so that they have room, you know, so you, you can get to the beds. But bed bugs don't live just on the bed. They live on the couch. They live on the chairs. Uh, they live in the ceiling. They live in the walls. They live everywhere. So, uh, you know, when you want to eliminate those places that people are going to be sedentary, you want to be able to get to those places really well. So don't take the stuff. Take it and put it on the dining room table. Yeah, that would be more effective than, you know, taking the stuff out of your bedroom and putting it on top of your sofa because that is very common. A lot of people will do that. So that's one way. So I hope that I've been able to answer that question anyway because that was a question left on last week's show after it had already aired. Somebody had watched it. Uh, I'm sorry if you hear anything like that. My daughter, it's 10 o'clock. She's usually in bed, but, you know, she's four, so I'm running a show with her running around. So we'll see how things go tonight. Um, One thing about <coughs> bed bugs. Oh, yeah, no problem, Daniel. Um... What about the electrical sockets? Now, usually <coughs> I advise people just to leave them alone um, because I handle that myself. If I mean, I don't want my customer to electrocute themselves. I know what I'm doing. And so if I go in there and I take the, uh, the outlet covers off, which I do, I showed that in one of my latest videos for cockroaches, how to remove the uh, electrical sockets, uh, sockets, the electrical um, cover plates. I showed how to take those off and treat in those with roach bait. And so you can take those covers off and you can dust in the wall. Uh, <laughs> it's not a requirement. It does kind of eliminate them a little quicker. Um, so it's not a bad idea to do that. And it's one less place they can go to. A lot of your insecticide dusts are highly repellent to bed bugs. So they're not going to, they're not going to want to go into the wall. You know, they're, they're going to be around in the room. They're going to, you know, want to come to you and bite you. And some pesticides you buy for bed bugs are highly repellent. So you'll chase them all over the place, chase them up the walls. And that's just one less place they can go to. So it's not a bad idea to dust in the wall sock, not in the socket itself, but in the, the space around the socket. Um, like I said, if you go back and watch that video on where to bait for cockroaches, uh, where I pull the, the, um, the face plate down around the edges of your uh, socket is where you'd want to put your dust, like where it goes actually into the wall behind your sheetrock, behind your wall panel board. Uh, those are the places you want to treat with dust. Those are really the places that the bed bugs are going to be heavily concentrated. I mean, there is a chance that they would retreat up into the wall itself, but that's not that's not a guaranteed place they're going to want to be. You know, you don't want to just, you know, they're not always going to be in there. Most of the time they're just going to be right around the outlet itself, the socket itself, and switch plates. 
So, you know, your on and off switch plate for your light in your room, places like that, you take those off. I have found bed bugs living around a switch plate. One of the last bed bug jobs I did, the bed bugs were inside the switch plate. I had to take the switch plate off of the wall and treat inside the switch plate. So, uh, <coughs> but I don't ever require that my customers handle that because I don't want anybody to electrocute themselves and I know what I'm doing, you know, so. I mean, if they want to, I have had customers do it just as preparation. They've gone and they've taken all the covers off, and I go in. It, it makes it easier for me if you know what to do, you know, but I don't ever tell people to do it. They Some people just do it because they've talked to other people. A lot of times with pest control, with bed bugs, people have had two, three, four different uh, exterminators they've talked to about dealing with the bed bugs and so they already have a preconceived notion of what they're expected to have to do to prepare for me and so so a lot of stuff is already done even though i've told them hey you don't have to do that you know they do it anyway just because they've talked to other people and other people say well this is what we make you do you know so and i'm gonna try to stay hydrated not necessarily. A lot of times, now, I'm, I'm, a lot of times, if y'all can see this, I don't know if you see the chat in the window or not, but Westwood asks, so they would not be inside the wall necessarily. Not necessarily. They will retreat into the wall. I had a job I did one time where I treated, and the bed bugs were running. The, the, actually, what it was was a woman had a uh, one of those chairs like, you know those electrical chairs that kind of helps pick you up. She was disabled, so she, she practically lived in this chair. And she it would, uh, you know, motorized chair, so it would pick her up so she could stand up and get into her little motorized scooter. And uh, <coughs> when she would, because she lived in that chair, it was infested with bed bugs. Um, when I treated that chair, the bed bugs went everywhere. There were thousands of them. I lifted up, oh man, I wish I had had pictures to show you guys, but I didn't. I don't get pictures unless people say I can take pictures, but um, she had like some towels where she kind of to give her some extra cushion, I guess, for when she's sitting in a chair. And I picked those towels up and there were probably two or 3,000 bed bugs in those towels. And so they immediately started running and scattering everywhere, trying to get away from me, running all up the walls and everything. And they were going into the sockets. Now, I don't know if they were in the sockets before or not, but I know after I treated, they were. So keep that in mind. When you treat, a lot of times you will chase bed bugs into places they weren't before. And so that's why you go in with a proactive plan to treat the areas you don't want the bed bugs to be. Because the way I see it, if you can treat there, and if the bed bugs aren't there next month, if you don't treat there, they're going to be there. So treat everywhere. Be very thorough. Uh, very, very thorough. And I, I do the same thing with cockroaches. If if you go into a house and you, you know, you're know you questioning a crack whether you should or shouldn't treat it, treat it. Because the bugs are going to be there. It's a crack and crevice treatment. Treat the cracks and crevices, all cracks and crevices. If you have to ask, should I treat it? You should. There's no, there's no question. You always treat it. So, and that's how I feel about bed bugs too. Bed bugs are as bad as cockroaches when it comes to, you know, going into the cracks and squeezing in and cramming in places when they're, especially when they're trying to get away from bug spray. So. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, so uh, anyway, what I was I was going to go over a little bit here about what I got set up on my show tonight, because this is the second week in a row I decided to do this. If you have any questions uh, later on, I, I do try to use my Twitter account. You can send me any pictures that you want me to identify at Green Acres PC, which is on the uh, screen right there. And you could also tweet me, or you can use Facebook, and you can hashtag Bedbug Show. And uh, if you have any questions or anything like that about the show, if you have anything you want to ask me that, that I haven't addressed or that you'd like addressed in a future episode, then don't hesitate to uh, you know ask me. But like I said, if you do the hashtag Big Bug Show, it just makes it easier for me to be able to find you if you if you do you know ask me a question because I can I can search through the. Uh, through the hashtags, it makes it easier for me to find stuff. So, and like I said, you could tweet any pics anytime, any day. If you uh, if you find something like early in the morning or late in the evening, you find a uh, 
you know, a picture of a bug that you're trying to show me or you want to know what it is, you can always tweet that picture to uh, at Green Acres PC and I will uh, probably get to you right away and, you know, identify it if I can. I mean, I'm not an entomologist, but I've seen a lot of bugs. And uh, as far as bugs, somebody is messing with something here. Oh, boy. Look at there. Is that alive? Give me a glass or something. A glass? Okay. A glass? Okay. I, did it fly away? No, I got it. Oh, man. That, that's impromptu. Well, all right. For y'all that don't know, it's winter time. And yes, Crossfire does make aerosol. Um, I have yet to try it. I haven't needed it. Uh, I've just used the the uh, stuff that I use to... Um, the, the liquid Crossfire is fine because I use a B&G to apply it and it's pretty high pressure. So I don't have to use a uh, aerosol for crack and crevice. But yes, they do make an aerosol for crack and crevice treatments. <coughs> I don't usually recommend it to people because it's easier just to use a liquid spray. And the, the label's so broad that... But I, I've actually considered getting the aerosol, but I haven't yet to try it. I haven't needed it yet on any jobs I've done. Oh, yeah, so you got it. Let me see that. There's a piece of dust in there. Yeah, it's fine. Let me see it. Because all I could find was an old jar. I don't know if you can see that. That's not really a very good jar. I thought it would be in a glass. This is a jar. Can I get it? Oh, look at there. See there? It's winter time, so uh, we get a lot of these in the house this time of year, trying to get out of the cold. She's not very lively. That is a, that is, what color is she, a red wasp? Yeah, that's a red wasp. So yeah, I'll leave her sitting there. Anyway. <laughs> Even bed bug people get get uh, bugs in their house. Of course, I'm like a plumber with a leaky faucet, so you know how that goes. If my wife begs me enough, I spray the house. So I don't really know what I was talking about now. That kind of threw me off the, uh, of what I was talking about. Everyone wanted to know what kind it was. It's a red wasp. That's what it was. Yeah, it'll sting you too. It's a good thing you didn't step on it. So... Anyway, sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> I had no idea that was going to happen tonight. Bubba cups. They hold a lot of water for you, for anybody who drinks a lot of water like me. They're great. So, yeah, but like I was saying, if you ever have a problem with a bug or anything, see, that's like I said, I just had a bug. Somebody just showed me a bug. My own wife showed me a bug. Wanted me to know what it was. It's a red wasp. That's what it is. So, <laughs> so, you know, if you have any questions about any bugs or anything getting in your house, don't hesitate to tweet the pictures at me. And you can tweet me during my shows, too. I'll answer it during the show, and I'll let you know what it is right now. So, <clears throat> that would actually be pretty fun if, if anybody tweeted me pictures during the show. So, well, I, you know, I... I thought that I would have more to talk about when it came to preparing a home for bed bugs. I'll tell you, now this is something that a lot of people, uh, they, they like to push, a lot of exterminators push this on their customers in order to treat for bed bugs. Uh, I had one lady tell me her exterminator would not treat for bed bugs unless they wrapped the mattress and the box spring with bed bags. Which means the that translates to me being, you know, in the in the profession as long as I've been, they're not going to treat the mattresses. They're not going to treat the box springs. Because they're requiring you to cover it with bed bags before they even do anything. Um so what that's gonna do is, and this is why I tell people to take the bags off of the bed and the box spring <coughs> because you you can't get to the mattress, you can't get to the box spring. And what they do is they seal the bugs in. There have been studies and cases where the bed bugs were actually able to bite the people through the mattress, through the mattress cover. 
So the bed bugs are still, they're trapped inside the mattress cover and they're biting people through the mattress cover and they're breeding inside the mattress cover. And if the mattress cover ever gets the least little bit of tear in it, if your child comes in, jumps on the bed with their shoes on and rips a hole in it, even a little teeny tiny hole is all it takes for bed bugs to come out, the bed bugs are right back in the room again and they never were pretty, they never were really eliminated. Um, bed bugs, the, uh, uh, at any stage, only need to be fed once every 45 days. They typically shed their skin every seven to 10 days. Eggs hatch six to 10 days. So you can have a fully infested home within three to six months of your initial, you know, your initial uh, infestation. Can grow to a serious infestation within three to six months. So what will happen is because they're living inside the box spring or inside your mattress and they've never really been eliminated because they're still in there, you'll get little tears and little holes in there and then they'll come out. They'll be all over the place. I had a lady who had them for, uh, she had a heat treatment done. The bed bugs were gone in the whole apartment for nine months. And as soon as a hole formed in the bottom of that box spring mattress pad, which those are usually the ones that tear first because they're laying right on top of the bed frame, the bed bugs came out and started eating her alive. And it had only been nine months because bed bugs can survive without a blood meal anywhere from a year, year and a half or more. It's a long time that they can survive inside that box spring without a blood meal. So, you know, it doesn't matter the quality of mattress cover that you get because they all are made of fabric and all fabric I don't care how strong you think it is if it's a bed bag it's not going to withhold against a metal frame of a bed frame or a wood frame for that matter because all wood frames and metal frames are held together with bolts and bolts are made out of metal and so they're going to rub against that metal they're going to rub against that frame uh, they're going to rub against just the wood itself and eventually it will cause a little little tears in the fabric and I don't think they'll last more than a year. Yeah, I honestly do. You know, if you're going to get a mattress bag, all right, here's, here's the thing. You want one with a guarantee. You want one that will guarantee at least three years. But the problem is if the guarantee doesn't last, do you really want to risk spending all that money to get rid of bed bugs and it didn't work? So, I advise not using bed bags and you know if exterminator is not going to treat the bed don't hire the exterminator because they really should be using a pesticide that's labeled to use on mattresses and box springs if they're going to get rid of bed bugs I mean bed bugs they live on the bed and you're not going to treat the bed that's that's a red flag to me that the exterminator is no good they're not going to treat that problem area they probably don't want to buy the pesticide to do the job because it's expensive you know, the all all bed bug spray, if it's any good, it costs a lot of money. They're pretty expensive. The most expensive thing that I have in my in my vehicle right now to get rid of bed bugs is Crossfire, and it's the most expensive thing that I own. It is the most expensive thing per volume that I have. So just keep that in mind. If they're not willing to use Crossfire, it's probably because they're not willing to pay the price for Crossfire, or they'd rather you pay for a very expensive heat treatment. You know, three or four thousand dollars more than what you would normally have to pay to get rid of bed bugs normally, because they're not that hard to get rid of. They're actually very easy to get rid of. That's why I'm doing this show because I want to educate people and teach you how easy it is to get rid of bed bugs because it's not hard at all. Um, you know, there are things that I advise people. It's better off hiring an exterminator like German cockroaches. You're going to spend more money trying to get rid of roaches yourself than you are hiring a professional. But when it comes to bed bugs, you can definitely get rid of bed bugs yourself. And if you live in an apartment complex where you've got neighbors all around you and you run the risk of them having bed bugs, and then you, okay, so let's say you get rid of your bed bugs, but your neighbor didn't get rid of theirs. It only gonna, it's only going to take a few days, a few weeks, a few months before they're right back in again. So it's better that you can do, I mean, if you're, if you're going to have pest control, you should have monthly pest control because a monthly pest control plan is cheaper than it is to treat for bed bugs. And that's going to eliminate the bed bugs before they can establish a foothold in your apartment. All right. So I'll go through some pricing here. 
let's say your exterminator. Now, exterminating prices vary from state to state. They vary from county to county. <coughs> let's say your exterminator uh, averages, your exterminating bill per month averages anywhere from 40 to $60. Um, that's a monthly pest control plan. So let me see, let me pull up my calculator. Cause I'll show you how, how it'll save you money. Um, I mean, I could actually bring this right up on the screen. Let's go ahead and do that. Let me share that. And it is not gonna share. Look at that, it's all black. It is not gonna share it at all. Oh well. I don't have a program that it'll share. All right, anyway, let's figure on typical bed bug job, $1,600. So if you've got $1,600, if you're gonna spray and you're gonna, or, or even a heat treatment, the lowest price is about 1,600. And let's divide that by 12. All right, that's $133 with repeating decimal three. So if you got 133, all right, now 60, let's see, uh, clear. Let's just do 130, that's easier. 130 minus 60, all right, that's $70 a month you've saved. Okay, that's $70 a month, and that's times 12, that's $840 a year you're not spending. And a bed bug treatment typically is only one treatment is all you're getting. So when you have monthly pest control, it's going to eliminate lots of problems. It's going to eliminate ants and roaches and silverfish and bed bugs and spiders and crickets and everything that's in your property. You know, you're not going to have any bugs. So, and if you do bring bed bugs in, they're going to die because there's pesticide in there that's going to kill them before they become a problem. And if you've got regular pest control, a lot of pest control technicians, they don't charge a full price for a bed bug job if they're already doing maintenance for you because you're already a valuable customer. So they don't, they treat you tip, I mean, if they're decent, they typically treat you better. All right, so Westwood says, it seems like a mattress cover on a bed is like the sarcophagus. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good thing at all. They're not good. I never, ever advise to use them. All right, Jones Palmer, I moved in an apartment that had some roaches, German ones. The apartment exterminator seemed like he was halfway uh, working. I could be wrong, but I hired my own, and I had a roach treatment and a barrier, but 90-day warranty. I started to see a few again three weeks later. Yes. All right, here's the problem with 90-day warranty exterminators, and I go over this in one of my videos. Wow, I am really, are you watching the video? Can you turn that off? I can't stream. Sorry. Um, but anyway, I, I do have a video that I went over with on uh, 90 day warranties and how they are a scam. And the reason that 90 day warranties, all right, exterminators come in and they'll say, I'm gonna guarantee this for 90 days. German cockroaches breed every 28 days. So, oh no, it doesn't matter what he used. It does. It honestly doesn't matter what he used, because German. What he's going to end up doing is he's going to breed chemical resistant roaches, because what happens when you apply a pesticide? is the pesticide will slowly start to degrade over time. They don't last forever. So as it starts to degrade, the roaches are gonna live longer from it and some are gonna get immune, um, immune to it. This is why you need a monthly pest control for German cockroaches. You can get away with monthly pest control for a lot of different things, but honestly, German roaches, if you're doing quarterly service for German roaches, you are not gonna get rid of your German cockroaches. Um, I'm sorry, my, my stream is really, it seems like the stream health is really horrible tonight. I don't understand why. Because I'm not on your, I'm not on your call. You're not? 
No, I'm on my li I'm on my cellular Wi-Fi. I don't know what is wrong with my signal tonight, but it is really, really, the stream health is very, very weak tonight. I am really sorry if this is causing a lot of problems for you guys watching. So just ex ex excuse me if you're dealing with a little bit of a lag issue. Um, but anyway, like I was saying, with German cockroaches, the only way that I've ever been able to successfully get rid of German cockroaches is on monthly pest control. Uh, typically, I can get rid of roaches within six months, sometimes less. I always require, I, well, I don't require people to do anything because I don't really make people sign contracts or force contracts or anything. But if, for some reason, I, my advice is always go three months after you see the last cockroach. And the reason that I say that is because cockroaches, like I said, they breed on a 28-day cycle. So, <coughs> excuse me, the eggs will hatch, babies will come out, and then they live, they, they have babies. Some eggs will last for 90 days. Some eggs can outlast that 28 days. There's always one or two that will actually live longer than the 28 days. So what I tell people is go three months, just go three months. You've already spent the money to get rid of the roaches. You might as well go an extra couple months to ensure that you eliminate your problem 100%. And, I mean, I don't mind if I work myself out of a job. I work myself out of a job all the time. If you eliminate the person's problem, you've gained a person that will spread your name around and talk good about you, and it's good good publicity to do it that way. So I would... Uh, well, I mean, I would tell the guy to come out and spray again. I would definitely tell them to come out and spray again. The pro See, what I do to get rid of roaches is I cycle my chemicals. So if I come today and I spray, uh, next month I'm going to come, I'm going to use something different. And the next month I'm going to come, I'm going to use something different. That way I always have a different pesticide in rotation so that you don't get roaches that are immune to what you're using. You don't breed a, a problem you can't get rid of. Because it is possible to breed chemical-resistant cockroaches that you cannot get rid of. No matter what you try to use, you're going to have these super roaches that you can't kill. Um, I went over that in a... I believe it was my last stream I went over uh, chemical resistances in roaches. But what happens is they actually do studies on these roaches. They take them and they'll give them a chemical that is like half the normal strength of what they need to get rid of the bug that they're dealing with. Well, the roaches that they're dealing with. Um... The 50% that don't die are somewhat immune genetically to the chemical. When they have babies, they let them breed, <coughs> they let them produce babies. Those babies grow, and then they wait, they give them a good population again, and then they give them an 80% dose. All right. Then they kill like 30%, 20%. You know, they're, they're, and then even when they give them like a double dose of the chemical, they don't kill any at all. That's how you breed a chemical resistant strain of cockroaches. So understand that when he's telling you he's giving you a 90 day warranty, he knows he's going to have to come back at least in 90 days, but he's hoping you don't call so he can make out with the money and not have to follow up on it. Because typically those 90 day warranty deals are more expensive then they're cheaper than a month-to-month-to-month -to -month -to -month exterminator, but they're also more expensive than like a quarterly visit, typically. So they're getting you on a, uh, they're getting you on like an initial charge every time they come. And so you're actually spending more money and you don't realize it, usually. I'm not talking, I don't know if that's the way your exterminator is, Jones, but that's what a lot of exterminators locally here do. <laughs> yeah, what happens is you have to just constantly get new things, new pesticide. One of the issues is that a lot of the chemicals on the market for cockroaches are weak. They are not mixed full strength. And um, I thought I had my phone. I don't know how I'm going to get my Twitter. I think I'm logged into my Twitter on this phone, though. Just in case anybody wants to send me a picture of a bug. I just thought about that. I wanted to make sure that I had that set up. 
so I can see new tweets. Okay. <coughs> anyway, sorry about that. But yeah, chemical uh, roaches are, are immune. They can get immune to pesticides really easily. It's one of the most annoying things to customers and to me as a pesticide technician is uh, as pest control technician is that when I go in somebody's house and I'm dealing with cockroaches and it takes me a couple months to figure out what they're not immune to, it can take a couple months. Because a lot of the pesticides that I use, you can buy over the counter. I mean, all right, to be honest, everything I buy, you can buy over the counter. The only thing you can't buy are restricted use pesticides. That's what you have to have a license to buy. Um, any pesticide, most any pesticide that a pest control technician applies in your home, you can buy as long as they will sell it to you. The problem is, a lot of your retailers will not sell you the pesticide because it is the pesticide is uh, you know they don't want to risk the liability in selling it to you rate isn't too bad as far as on contact because it's full of pyronal butoxide pyronal butoxide is a really good pesticide and they mix it in with a lot of chemicals. It's more like a catalyst, and it helps kill the roaches on contact. It, it breaks down a part of their immune system that keeps them from being able to be immune to pesticides. So RAID works really well on contact. But as far as a residual, it's not going to work on a residual level. That's the problem with RAID. So yeah, I, I wouldn't mind having RAID. In fact, I have told customers now, there are times when I go in and I do a roach clean out, and I will tell the customer, don't use any bug spray because what I've used in here is a non-repellent insecticide. Or if I use baits, you know, you don't want them to spray around and the spray come in contact with your roach bait. Because if you if you spray on top of roach bait, the roaches aren't going to eat it. Just like if I came in your house and you're getting ready to eat dinner and I spray a bunch of pesticide all over your food, you're not going to want to eat the food. And so you don't spray pesticide on roach bait. And a lot of times, because they're, they're just, I mean, they're consumers, they may not know exactly how to use the, the pesticide to the best ability. And so they'll come in contact with, it'll come in contact with bait by accident. And you don't want that. You want the roaches to eat the bait. If you put it out, you want them to eat it. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I usually tell people just, just, if you have a problem, call me. Because I'd rather you call me and then I can either talk to you over the phone or I can come out and do a retreat. I don't charge. I guarantee my monthly pest control. So if somebody has a problem between my monthly visits, then I'll go out for free. But I would rather them call me and let me know that they're having a problem so that I can, you know, I can adjust my chemicals or I can change the way that I'm applying pesticide in their home. That's what I, I don't want them to go and do it themselves. I mean, you're already paying for me to do it. Why would you go and pay more more money for more pesticide when you're paying for chemical? I've got plenty of chemical, you know. Like I was saying, the uh, you can't. A lot of times they won't sell you the stuff that I have, even though you can legally buy it and you can have it. A lot of times they just won't sell it to you. Um, so it was 155 the first time, and every 90 days it's 90 dollars. Is that fair? So that averages to $30 a month. You ought to ask him what he charges on monthly pest control. Because if it's not much more than $90 on a 30-day on a schedule, I mean, you figure, all right, if it's $30 a month, then that's $90, right? If it's $45 a month, let's see, or $40, $45, let's see here. I'm going to have to leave my calculator up because I am horrible at math in my head. Then it's 135. Then it's $45 difference. All right. So if they're charging you $45 a month, then, ba I mean, if you're if you're going monthly, you're basically going to spend $45 more than the $90 you're already spending. So you're really only arguing over $45, because if you're already willing to spend the the $90, then you're really only out $45. You should have them come every month. That's going to be better. That's going to work better for you. Uh, he, he could just, a lot of people don't like regular pest control anymore. They, they just don't like it. They don't want it. And a lot of your exterminators are afraid. I don't know why, but they're afraid to offer monthly pest control plans. But that's really the most, that's really what's going to work the best for the customer. 
So that's always what I advise. The only time that I usually advise less than monthly pest control, like a quarterly or every other month, is like mice, maybe maybe like stink bugs, uh, ladybugs, cluster flies, uh, wasps, things that are seasonal. But most everything else, you really need monthly pest control to eliminate, like ants and spiders and roaches and uh, you know things like that. You really need monthly pest ants you need monthly pest control for. I can't speak for roaches, but I paid 600 total for two treatments that the exterminator took about an hour and a half to apply each treatment. So that's three hours total. Not bad money, but bugs are gone. Good. That's great, Brooke. That's good. That's actually, that's about, that's about a fair rate. That's really fair. And, and yeah, I'm sure he did work about an hour and a half too, because that's about how long it takes me to do a bed bug job, if that's, if that's what you're talking about, bed bugs. But no, that's not bad at all. That's, that's fair. I mean, compared to, yeah, see, once every 90 days for $90, I would call them and see if you could step up your plan, how much it would cost to come every month. Just ask them. Just say, look, this is not going to work you're gonna to need to come out more often because I have German cockroaches and I think they're immune to what you're using. That's what I would tell them. That's, I mean, personally, if I would, call, I would call them up and I would say, hey, these roaches are still a problem. I don't think I wanna wait a full 90 days. They're here, it's only been three weeks and they're still here. I don't want chemical resistant roaches. You need to come and use something different. You know, you could always do that. You could approach it in that way. And that way it gives you kind of a little bit of an upper ground on them, but. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to get over this cough. I've had to creep in crud, it seems like, for about three weeks now. Usually, <clears throat> it's not really much more expensive to do a monthly pest control or even bi-monthly pest control, but bi-monthly is not gonna deal with roaches either. You really want monthly for that. Um, the only reason that I really, I remember when I used to, I used to, the chemicals weren't as good years ago. Uh, things have, have come a long way in 30 years, but uh, you know, I used to not even advise quarterly service ever. The only people I really did quarterly service for were like vacation homes that were really only open seasonally, like at the lake or you know, places like that where people are only going to come every three three months or four months or whatever. They're not really going to visit very often. Uh, they could get away with a quarterly service. Um, but really, monthly, because what I do, when I, when I do a general maintenance pest control plan, I cover rats, mice, ants, spiders, you, you name it. I cover everything. Uh, bed bugs are a little extra if someone ends up having bed bugs. You know, I just charge mainly to flip up the beds and stuff, and it's not that much extra uh, if they're already on a regular monthly plan. But, you know, that's... I, I just never, ever advised... The only reason that I started really advising, like, 30-day or 90-day plans was because of budget. You know, some people just cannot afford monthly pest control. Even though it's not that much more expensive, they're just really tight. And, it, you know, money's tight nowadays. And, and the chemicals are better than they used to be. Um, so you can get more residual on your pesticide. But I usually still to this day always advise monthly service is going to be the best. And I don't guarantee quarterly service either. So if people have a problem between quarterly visits, I charge to go back because I just don't guarantee it. It's not something that I stand behind because I know how the chemicals work and the residual is just not there. You're, yeah, the pesticide label says it will last for 90 days, but the trick is will it kill things for 90 days? You know, yeah, you may be killing a spider, all right? You spray it around a house. 60 days. The spider may still be dying from the pesticide, but it's taken it like a week to die. If the customer is seeing that bug, they're not seeing a dead bug. They want to see dead bugs if they see them at all. If that bug's not dead, they're going to be irritated. And so I tell them, you need monthly pest control. So you've always got a chemical there that's going to be strong enough to kill the bug within a few days rather than a few weeks. 
you know, you want to kill it within a few hours. When it's first applied, maybe two hours, it's dead. You know, you're just finding dead bugs. You're not finding alive ones crawling around in the middle of the floor. You know, they're just all dead. So that's why, and that's what I tell people too, that go with a quarterly service. I sell them, I say, hey, expect to see bugs. You're going to see bugs. You're not going to be seeing very many of them after I first treat. And you probably won't see very many live ones anyway for the first couple of weeks. But after the first month or so, expect to see bugs until I'm due back. And some people are fine with that. You know, it's just your tolerance level and what you're willing to put up with and what you're not willing to put up with. <clears throat> I'd like to know what that guy did, Brooke. If you know, if, if you, uh, what, he, what kind of treatment he did. If it was a liquid application or if it was a heat application, I'd like to know. I know I've seen you in here before. <clears throat> I don't know if she's still here or not. I don't know how to check. So. I had a window open here. There it is. There we go. <clears throat> So now, like I said, for those that are just coming into the channel tonight, if uh, the reason I have this tweet picks link up here at Green Acres PC, if you have any bugs or anything you want to get identified uh, while I'm on stream tonight, you could do it. I'll do it live. I'll go ahead and answer your tweet live. Uh, it's at Green Acres PC. If you have any bugs, you want to treat me pictures. Just bugs. Don't get me banned from Twitter. <laughs> Also, if you have any questions and you're watching this after the stream has already gone off, you can ask me at, uh, you can hashtag Bedbug Show either on Twitter at Green Acres PC, any question that you have, or you could hashtag that into Facebook as well. Uh, I'm on Facebook too. I ought to put that, I mean, my car is up there and you see Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and stuff on my car. But um, I am on Facebook. It's Green Acres uh, Pest Control LLC. You can search me on Facebook, find me, like me, whatever, follow me. I put up funny stuff every now and then. Uh, Twitter as well. I have an Instagram, but uh, I don't really advertise that a whole lot. It's on my videos. If you check my video links, um, I don't know if I've, I don't think I've got it on my live stream info. Like if you scroll down and look at the info, I don't know if I've got it down there or not. I'm checking right now just to see if I have an Instagram link. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's down there. And my Reddit and all that stuff where I answer questions and stuff like that. So yeah, Jason Alicia Acres, it's my Instagram link down in the info below. You can click that, check out my Instagram. I got pictures on there of bugs and stuff I take every now and then. I don't have as many pictures there. So I just don't take a whole lot of pictures. If I see something worth, you know, I'm, I'm going to get some pictures of this wasp. Definitely going to get pictures of this wasp before the night is over and put that up on my Instagram. That's going to be pretty cool because for y'all that didn't see it yet, I caught a wasp tonight. On, on uh, my wife caught it actually live and put it in this dirty jar come on there we go get on down in there see there boy that's focused nice look at that a nice red wasp she's pretty healthy but yeah I'm gonna get some pictures of that to put on my Instagram later that should be pretty interesting I like bugs <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame I got to kill them all, ain't it? But that's what uh, that's what makes me a living. So, <laughs> but yeah. So if you have any questions at all, uh, like I said, after the show ends, or you could tweet me anytime during the show or whatever. If you don't want people to see your name live in the chat over here, uh, you can tweet me at uh, Green Acres PC, and you can hashtag Bedbug Show and whatever question that you have. And uh, I'll answer it live next week. Like this, uh, the beginning of this show, if you scroll back and, and, and watch the end of Rewind or whatever, uh, you can actually see where I answered a question. A lady had asked me, and I'll go over it real quick too. Again, uh, I had a, a lady that asked me last week after my show had already gone up on the air. She said, you know, you always talk about what you shouldn't do and, and how heat treatments don't work and how bed bags don't work and all the things that don't work. And... Uh, not the things that do work and how to properly, you know, what do I do after I've bought Crossfire? How do I apply it? What do I need to do to prepare my room? And so I kind of went over that a little bit at the beginning of the show, but basically you want to strip your beds completely naked and you want to treat your whole bed. You know, you want to make sure that you're able to treat your bed. You don't treat your covers, take them and throw them in the washing machine. 
high heat and uh, I didn't really go over that but uh, the only heat treatment that I know that really works effectively is is throwing your laundry in the washing machine and heat it up on high heat water and then when you dry it on high heat in the dryer and that'll kill your bed bugs uh, I've actually found dead bed bugs in the trap of a lint trap before at a customer's house where they had dried uh, their laundry and found dead bed bugs in the lint trap. So you will kill bed bugs with your dryer at least. Uh, but I always tell people to wash them anyway because, you know, with the bed bugs and the blood stains and stuff like that, they leave all over your pillowcases and all over your bed sheets and everything. It's better off just to wash that stuff as they get kind of nasty after a while. So, but anyway. I guess if there are, if you guys don't have any questions, it's a kind of a short episode tonight. I know I kind of went over about a half an hour last week. Had a lot more people in here last week. I, uh, I've got five people watching now. If there's any questions you guys have before I log off of here tonight, I'm going to probably call it a night. And my daughter is still awake, but she is behaving very well working on a puzzle. So, uh, you know, if, if you guys have any questions at all or you want to ask me anything, I'm here to answer your questions. Uh... Otherwise, I'm going to log on off of here and call it an evening. Unless, do you know anything else to talk about, Alicia? She can't hear me. She's watching some movie. <clears throat> hey, Alicia. Yep. Can't get her attention. She's lost. <laughs> If you have a house with bed books and you have a bookcase, do you put the books in a plastic bag and put it on the dining room table before the treatment? I wouldn't. I don't move any furniture. Um, the thing is, all right, if it were a library, then I would probably figure out a way to treat the books and everything probably bag them now you can do these these different type of heat treatments uh, where they bag your stuff independently and they heat those bags so the bed bugs can't get away that's the only way that I know that heat treatments actually work and they do that for libraries and they do it for uh, well I know they do it for libraries where they'll take the books off the shelves and they'll put them in those bags and they'll heat all those books up and kill those bed bugs that works um, when it comes to a home and you're living in the home and you're sleeping in the home. The bed bugs are going to come out and bite you. Like I said, the way that I do the treatment, and if anybody here has ever gotten one of my PDF documents or anything that I send out uh, with instructions on, on how to do it yourself, um, the, all right, you treat your bed once every 30 days you treat your bed frame, your bed, your mattress, everything. All right. You sleep in your bed or your couch. If you sleep on the couch, you treat the couch too. Um, so if you are laying in the bed, the bed bugs have got to come to you. They've got to come out of the books to bite you. They're going to be hungry. They're not going to stay in the books. They're not going to live in the books if they can't get a meal. They're going to go where the meal is. And so you're laying in the bed, the bed bugs come out of the books, and they go to the bed, the bed's been treated, they bite you. So, yeah, you can treat the books, and it may take longer to get rid of them overall, because, but it's it's not going to take, typically it's not going to take longer than 90 days. It might take four visits, you know, you might have to do it four times, but the bed bugs are going to get hungry, and they're going to have to come to you. All right, this is what happens with bed bugs. The... The males are very aggressive sexually. So when they're reproducing with a female, the female, they actually have to inject through the side of her body to impregnate her. All right. That's, that's really um, violent. And she can't go through more than two, maybe three reproductive cycles before she dies. If the male tries to impregnate her again, it'll kill her. All right, so what will happen is the bed bugs will reproduce in your bedroom. 
and they'll have lots of babies in your bedroom. And then the female has had all she can handle of the males, and they will retreat, and they will get on your bookshelves and in your books, your nightstands and your dressers, and they'll start having babies in those areas. And so then you'll have bed bugs of all stages inside your bookshelf. They won't just be on the bed. They're on the bed. But now they're on your bookshelf too, and they're in your dressers, and they're in your nightstands, and they're in all your furniture because they're trying to survive. They'll go into your bathroom. They'll go into your sh shelving units and stuff like that in the bathroom. They'll go everywhere they can go. They'll, they, you'll find them up on your curtains. You'll find them real high up on your crown molding. You'll find them all over the place, way away from where they really should be, which is on your box springs, on your bed frame because that's what happens when bed bugs reproduce too often is the bed bugs actually end up chasing the females into other rooms of the house so what i do is when you treat the bed and you treat the box spring you're going to kill those bed bugs you're going to kill the vast population of what is actually biting you at night and then the other bed bugs are going to be able to move back into that area and feed on you again and they do and so they'll come back in and they'll start living on the bed again and of course the bed's been treated so they die because it's treated with a residual chemical that lasts for 30 days that's why i don't i just don't now i'm not going to go in and rearrange my whole customer's house i'm not going to go and take all their stuff and put it in bags i would have to charge a fortune to do that and i'm not going to require that my customers do it a lot of people that call me are uh, disabled um, they don't really have, they would have to have somebody come over and do it for them. It's a lot on them. It's a lot of hassle. And I don't think it's important to do it. Now, if people do it, I can, I, I always tell them, yeah, you can, you can do it. It's not going to hurt to do it. But the problem is when you take everything out and you bag it up, you run the risk of running the bed bugs everywhere because they don't like movement. They don't, that's why they don't live, they don't necessarily live on the mattress. They can, but usually on those really big thick mattresses with like a pillow top or something like that, they'll live down near the bottom of the mattress where it connects to the box spring. But they don't like a lot of movement. They're they're not they they don't they just they, they're afraid of people so they they don't they live near enough to you to where they can get a blood meal but they also want to be able to get away so they don't get killed all right so understand that when you go and you start moving bookshelves all around and moving furniture all around and taking clothes out of your dressers and stuff like that you're going to stir up bed bugs you're going to stir them up and they're going to try to get away from those spots because they're immediately going to go into this oh we've got to get away from here this is not the safest place where it's not the best place to live we need to get away from here and find somewhere else to live and so that's another reason I just don't advise people to do, you know, a whole lot of rearranging of their stuff and pull it out and put it in plastic bags because plastic bags aren't treated. I mean, yeah, say they take and put all their stuff in plastic bags. The bed bugs are in the plastic bags now. You can't treat it in the plastic bags. Their stuff's still there. So it's better to just leave the stuff alone and just treat the whole, treat the baseboards, treat the beds, treat like you would normally do crack and crevice treatment through the whole apartment or house or whatever. And then treat the bed, the box spring, the mattress, the headboard, the footboard, you know, all those areas so that they have to go through chemical to get to you when you're asleep at night and they all die. That works really well. That's, that's, I mean, I have success all the time with that mode of action. That's what I always advise because I don't see any sense in stirring up a whole bunch of bed bugs and spreading them all over. Now, there have been instances where I have had to go past 90 days. Usually that's in really heavily infested homes. Uh, I mean, really heavily infested where they're just running all over when you start treating no matter what you treat with. Uh, that happens. You know, I try to get rid of them as quickly as possible so the customer doesn't have to deal with them more than three months, but sometimes it takes longer. That's why a lot of these exterminators are promising these quick, quick finish deals with the heat treatments and the freeze treatments and people are buying it because they don't want to deal with the bed bugs for 90 days. They want to get rid of them right now, you know, and, and that's understandable. You don't want roaches. You want to get rid of them right now. You don't want mice. You want to get rid of them right now. You know, if you don't want a specific bug in your house, you wanted it gone yesterday. You never wanted to see it in your home. Some bugs take a while to get rid of. That's just the way it is. And, you know, fleas take 21 days. Roaches take three to six months. Bed bugs, they're, they're about three to six months as well. Just expect that. It's a lot to deal with, but once you get rid of them, you're happy. So...
you know, just understand that's what you're running into. It's at least 90 days to get rid of bed bugs. I never advise any less. Now, that's why I was wondering for Brooke up there that, that was talking about spending the $600, I'd like to know what they used to get rid of them in two months. Now, I've been able to get rid of bed bugs in two months, but, uh, and I was using, actually, I think I was using Alpine at the time, but uh, I got rid of them in two months with Alpine. Hold on just a minute. That's my phone that just went off. Uh oh. Facebook. <laughs> that was not anything important, but I wanted to make sure that it wasn't Twitter. Man, I got so many. Okay, yeah. But, well, well, we've been on for an hour now, so I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. Uh, it's been great talking to y'all tonight. Appreciate everybody coming out. If you like the video or you like the live streams and you want to see more of them, give me a thumbs up. Uh, follow me, subscribe to me, share me, all that good stuff. That basically tells me that, I, that you like what you see and you want more of it. So, uh... Y'all have a great night, and I really appreciate it. And I'll be seeing you next week, Friday nights, The Bedbug Show, live on YouTube. Thanks a lot.